uh, brother and sister in Christ fastest 30 minutes uh, living with loving me. Now, Joseph in Genesis 41 and uh, verse number 14, Pharaoh is sent and called, Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. Now, remember, just on the other night there, we was talking about the, uh, the butler finally remembering Joseph after, you know, a couple of years. Now, Pharaoh is having to live with trying to learn how to love himself. But you know what? Don't you think Pharaoh loved himself because he's scared to death right now, isn't he? This man is terrified. So he needs somebody to help get him on track because he's under demonic oppression and suppression. Do you know how many people there are each and every night, um, in day sometimes, that are under Spiritual suppression. When you have children that are afraid to go to sleep at night, you know, scared to sleep by themselves. I mean, I was like that. I can tell you that nine times out of ten, most of them think about one thing and one thing only. What's that? The devil. <laughs> They're scared of the devil. And it's not easy to ease the mind of children when they are troubled. You can read them all the books you want. Uh, you can put in night lights. Um, some even sleep with the lights on. But they have to get to a place as they grow and mature to know that the Lord is their shepherd and they shall not want and that there is no evil that can come up on them. So you have to be patient in the process. You can't do them like, you know, the black folks did. Us back in the day, our mama did those them, and grandmama those them. Boy, if you don't get your scary butt in that bed and get in there and lay down and go to sleep, ain't nothing in there won't you. What do you think in there won't you? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm sitting up seeing this stuff with my own eyes. I'm sitting there looking at these ghostesses. Uh, with my own eyes, wouldn't see in ghosts. It's just strange things happening, you know. Just strange things happening. And um, it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things. And uh, I'm thinking about it right now. That's why I just paused just now because, <laughs> you know, I don't want to tell y'all what happened to me, but there was some s s mysterious stuff happening because um you know, I saw it, but grew out of it eventually. That's why you don't let the children look at the exorcists and things like that. Don't let those kids watch those movies. Don't let them see nothing like that. Take strong children and people of God to be able, even pre preachers and pastors don't even watch that. They're afraid to watch the exorcists because they're scared of the devil. So a lot of pastors are afraid of devils and demons. Now, listen to me now. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Now, the pastors can get up in the pulpit and bark like a big dog all they want. They all bark in the pulpit. Chihuahuas bark. The pastor can get up in there. And they do it every Sunday. Every Sunday religious holiday they do it. But I often tell people like this right here. There's a lot of people that can talk and run that mouth. Scare somebody with that mouth because they did it to me. They did it to me. It scared the hell out of me. And there was something that hit me. And it was this military thing because everybody's not like me. Like I said, you're not... You, you, I'm going, I'm going to deal with me because this is me. Okay, you, you, everybody's not like me. You're not going to find a normal 
smart, dumb, ignorant fool. You're not going to find a fool that was like this fool every day. You're just not going to find it. Okay, what do you mean by that? Someone that loves the people, take care of the people, keep God's commandment, do what God tells them to do, help take care of the poor, feed the family, take care of the children, all that. That is considered to be a fool. Now, here's the thing. Well, Prophet Johnson, I'm a fool. No, no, you with the right person. Here's the thing. You understand? Now, you see the reversal of it? You're really not a fool, then. but you see the reverse. You see what they think. Those big dog barking, just like the Pharaoh, he's a big dog. They're barking, but inside they don't have an interpreter. Inside they don't have no one that can bring them peace. See, the doc game is played across the board. Doc this, doc that. Yeah, we getting this together. Doc, I just bought this church. Yeah, doc. We got this many members. Yeah, doc. We got another church down here in this city. Yeah, doc this, doc that. See, the doc game is being played. Here's the thing. Here's what God got me. God said, look at that man doing all that talk. He said, can he run two miles? He said, look at that woman doing all that talk. She bad, ain't she? Ain't she pretty with all that glory, diamond ring, fingernails on? He said, look at her. He said, can she run two miles? I said, well, well wait a minute. He said, I want you to look at those preachers in the pulpit. I done told y'all this before. He said, how many of those preachers do you think can fight, really fight, and will die for me? How many of them do you think can really fight and will die for me? If, if any, name one. He said, name one in the pulpit that can beat you up. I looked up there and fat one, tall one, skinny one. Look. I said, God, none of them. Only one that might be able to beat me up is that one that just got out of prison, and he's a gangster. And I had to go deep on him. The Lord said, that'd probably be the only one, but that was way back. That was, he wasn't even there. He was in jail then at the time. So he, you know, he got out of jail. They, but I said, none of these people. He said, that's right. You see. And the ones that come out of prison, what are they? He said, they're wild asses snuffing at the wind. He said, they cannot fight. They can't run two miles. They're out of shape, half of them on medication, and yet you're afraid of what they're saying because of my word, and you know my word better than they do? My point is this. Half of y'all are listening and afraid of folks that can't even run two miles and fight. <laughs> Prophet Joseph, can you run two miles? Probably not now. Probably run two steps. Here it is. Let's get on to this. And um, Pharaoh is going to interpret to tell Joseph about the dream, okay? And um, Pharaoh called and they go get Joseph and they get him and they bring him out. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have a dream, a, a dream. So he's entering into the dream. You see what I mean? <clears throat> in verse number 15, and, 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 um, and there is no one that can tell me what it means. And he said, um, thou that canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh. Now look at what Joseph said to Pharaoh in verse number 16, Genesis 41. It is not in me. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And I don't have it yet, but I'm prophesying because God going to give you an answer of peace. That's just like all the folks that recently got blessed by the presence of Prophet Johnson. The atmosphere was, yo, 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 yo. God blessed everybody. That was in the atmosphere just recently here. As I had to, you know, go to a little town there to just um, be a blessing to the people. And indeed it was, but the shocking mechanism of their uh, re reception 
And the words that they received just, just blew them out. Just, just they're, they're done for now. I mean, many of you wish that you could have went there. Many of you wish that you could have been there. And uh, I don't want to say where I went or what I did, but I did go to a church service in a city recently, just a few days ago, and I spoke. And um, y'all already know what happened. Well, prophet, y'all already know what happened, okay? Everybody, everybody got blessed. When I tell you blessed, we're not talking about this old jumping and shouting stuff. No, no, not that. Not the there and the there and the there and the No, not that. They got the, in other words, that glory just set. Boom. Just set. And I think about that little fella I prayed for in the end, <laughs> little Malachi. <laughs> I said, your name is the beginning and the end, brother. And I thought about little Malachi when I prayed for brother Malachi, and I want the crew over there to know I'm still praying for him and some of the other people. I won't call no names out. But I looked at that little boy, received that fire inside, and stood there with that white shirt on, and inside of his body it was shaking. Shaking, shaking. 13 year old, 12 years old. That's how powerful it was. You see. But I want to see the wheelchair. Real empty wheelchair. The lame walk, the dumb speak, the blind see. I don't want nobody to come up talking about I just got zapped with the Holy Ghost and filled with the Holy Ghost and still in the same condition. No. It's time out for receiving motivational, emotional, good feeling messages that do not have any results. You get so tired of them. And the churches are full. If your church is not full, pastor, it will be. You don't have to worry about that. The people are coming back to church voluntarily. Because in us is to worship and to serve God. That's in all of us. And we belong to him. And we are the children of God. Pharaoh is having to see an example of what it means to live with loving himself. Think about Pontifer. Pontifer knew what was going on with his wife. And think about how Pontifer and his wife is going to feel when they find out that Joseph is second in command of the kingdom. It's on down the line. We'll see it a little bit later on. You see, people that put you down, at the time, Pontifer and his wife is over Joseph. He's in the dungeon. People will leave you in the dungeon, but God know how to promote you over them. While they count you out, while they're laughing, rejoicing at your failure. And now let me tell y'all a secret, and it's not a secret. When you see people that hate you and want to see you destroyed and will do anything to destroy your name or whatever, when you, there it goes, God. When you see those people being chastised by God, buffeted, don't you look at them and laugh. Don't you say, I told you God was going to get you. You don't say none of that. I've already warned all those people. God is going to deal with all those demons. He gonna de God going to get all of them. He going to get those devils. That's not to rejoice over. When you see your enemy or somebody that hates you and that person get in a car wreck or that person get burned up in a fire or that person get killed. You don't go around saying, I told you, I told them they never should have messed with me, that God going to get them, God going to do this, God going to do that. You know what? You're evil. 
you're wicked yourself. You turn your head and you go get down on your knees like Prophet Johnson did. And you ask God to have mercy upon the people that hate you. You ask Father to bless those that despitefully use you. Bless them that cursed you. You see, that's what you do. It's not the same as in me warning all of them because their day is coming. All of the enemy's days are coming. I know this. I even prayed and told God to have mercy upon them. And God said to me, no, son, my hand of judgment holds the mercy, you see. So you be careful how you curse people, how you want to see people fall so that you can rejoice and talk on the telephone, go out to eat with the families and the sisters and the brothers, and y'all get together and you gossip like a bunch of cackling hens. You see, you missing what love is. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you must know that you are the best and the only of you that there will ever be. No matter how bad you are, you are the best and the only of you in this world. The only person you have really is you. The other per people got themselves. And what do we all need? We need each other. We need each other. I need so many people, I can't even ask God to send me anyone. Just, just please, Lord, just someone that I could share with, someone to sit down and eat with. Lord, you, you ever been so desperate until you, you'll take anything just for comfort, for peace, for love? If the snake wouldn't bite me, I'd sleep with a pack of rattlesnakes. That's how bad it is. That's how hurtful it is. That's how alone it is to be broken with no communication, to live a life void and empty of people. Are you there yet? <laughs> Prophet Johnson, wait a minute. Wait now. I'm trying to show you. Do you really love the family and family reunions and why? Do you really love getting together with the mothers, the brothers, and the sisters and why? I loved it all. We all loved it. But there was only one problem. As they grow older, they become hell raisers. The dirt that they did when they was younger become more dirtier now. They're manipulating, peeking, sneaking, sneaking, jeering, and looking, and peering. I saw aunties and uncles that I loved all my life, and it bring tears to my eyes. They never really cared for me. They talked about the last name of my family, which is the Manning. I'm a Manning, in case you all don't know. I'm really not a Johnson. I am really a Mathis Manning. That's what I really am. I am not a Johnson, only by name, but I'm not that, okay? I am a Manning, originally, <laughs> okay? You heard of the football players, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, <laughs> you know, Archie Manning. <laughs> we rode with them guys coming up in the football atmosphere. Never met them a day in my life, but they was like family to us growing up in Mississippi. That's all my family and all my brothers and all we talked about was them in football and the Manning family because there's connection there. That's a long story. But here's the deal. 
each and every one of us love to be in the presence of others, to be appreciated, to be admired, to be cared for, to be loved. And that is so easy to do. It hurt me so bad when I saw how evil my aunties and my uncles that are Christian, these are big Christians, people that I cannot call out close to me, even the birtherites. When I saw how they had gotten older and more set in their ways and, and I'm able to discern this and just look at them and, and, and just knowing that they don't like me. And I'm the way I am now. Nice guy. But they never cared. They never liked at me. For what reason? Because of that name. Because of my last name or the name that my generation came out of, which was the Manning. You see. The Bible says a good name is better chosen to be, a good name is better than rubies and diamonds. A good name means something. All I tried to ever build, all you tried to ever build, was a good name. Was a good name. When you hear that name, even in this region, when you hear that name, Bostic. Well, when you hear that, everybody here know that these are prominent, successful people. They, everybody knows that. Just when you hear the name, <clears throat> Bostic, when you hear it, oh, yep, there, there they are. There's the Bostic, certain ones, there they are. Well, when the people hear the name Prophet Johnson, they're like, oh, my God. Oh, gee, go, Lord, what, what? Yeah, we know him. Yeah, we done heard him. Yep. A good name. So when the enemy comes, his primary focus is to destroy your name. What did they do to Joseph? They tried to destroy his name. Who did it? The wife of Potiphar. You see, people will lie on you and get your name destroyed. Now, I'm going to read, but we got all week for this, but I want to say this. And uh, I'm just going to give it to you straight. Back in Mississippi when we was eight, nine years old, walking home from football practice, 9 and 10, you know, Little League, or baseball. We would walk through the white neighborhood and uh, in order to get to the projects of Mississippi. And I remember so many times us looking behind us because we knew the police was coming. The white people would look out the window and see us walking and call the police on us. And the police would come in and they'd take our names or whatever, try to scare us half to death. But we got to the point to where we just didn't even go through the neighborhood no more. We had to go all the way around. Since, man, we're going the long way around. God, man, I don't, the long way around is about another four or five miles. Go through the neighborhood is maybe one mile. Just walking through. You see. I witness how evil works. I know how it works. And when I think about it, um, I know that Y'all are in trouble. Y'all really are, but you don't know it. You don't know it, but you're in trouble. 
You really are. So Joseph is going to explain the dream to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh is going to tell Joseph the dream. And uh, he's explaining the cows to Joseph and the corn to Joseph, the seven ears. And in verse <coughs> and in verse number 24, and the thin ears divide the seven good ears, and I told this unto my magicians, the magicians, but there was none that could declare it unto me. Come on, they can't lie to you because you're going to kill them. They better tell you the truth. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. Who did God show? God showed Pharaoh. God showed the butler. God showed the baker. I wish I could preach right now, but I am totally depleted. Really, I am. I'm a zombie talking to y'all now. God showed them. Why didn't God show Joseph? Come on, prophet. Come on, pastor. Who did God show? Hmm? God showed the sinners and the one that was in power. He gave the dream. He showed them the dream. Joseph didn't have no dream. Come on, prophet. Who's dreaming? Who's really dreaming? Here we go. 